Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Bob. I get a message for you today and today You know, we're talking about the resurrection this whole week and today's the time with Jesus You know, he um, He was crucified. He was laid to rest and we're in between That time, you know, did he go to heaven? Did he go to hell? and preach uh, You know, that's something we you know there is evidence for okay um in the bible all right but um my focus today is is um simply on realities around easter all right we <clears throat> like i've been trying to say is you know we are distracted from even thinking about easter okay and the only thing we know for sure, right, is that we're going to die, all right? We don't know for sure. I mean, I know for sure, but, you know, I'm just talking as, 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 as you know, the average guy on the street or, like, how, you know, a lot of people uh, are not sure about Jesus. The common, you know, refrain is that he was a more a good good teacher, um, et cetera, you know. But nobody ever calls him God, you know, never... You know, I'm not saying nobody, but, you know, um, Savior, if you do, you're a Christian, but the non-Christians, and then, you know, there are more non-Christians than Christians, okay? <laughs> I think so, anyway, because the Bible says few find, find it, all right? So, based on that alone, so we, we don't know yet, we don't read the Bible, so do you see a, a connection here? The fact that we don't know about Jesus is probably related to the fact that we don't read the Bible, all right? And we listen to what other people have to say to create our thinking on the subject. And that that's a problem, you know. The printing press was made for the specific intent to get people to read the Bible, okay? Because salvation is available to anybody who believes all you got to do is learn about jesus and then believe in jesus you know and jesus is lord which means that jesus is god so there's a deity uh he was fully god and fully man when he came to earth and only god can live a perfect life and that's what he did he did not sin and he was the perfect lamb of God as a result, slain from the foundation of the earth. And that's what's necessary to satisfy God's righteousness. And there is no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. So Christ was put up for us in time in a public place. And then he made a public spectacle of all his enemies. And now he's at the right hand of the Father, okay? But he, you know, the Father sent the Spirit, the God, Jesus sent the Spirit, whoever you want to say. You know, I think there's evidence for both in the Bible. But we have this Holy Spirit, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, who is a comforter to us, who see, seals our soul, seals our redemption, as it says in um, Romans 416 and Hebrews uh, 114 and this guarantees our salvation you also see it in Hebrews uh, Ephesians uh, 114 Romans 416 Hebrews 722 2nd Corinthians 1 22 2nd Corinthians 5 verse 5 so th these these are things that you know we are not allowed to know about all right, you're not allowed to read that, and 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 if you do, if you get saved, you're one of those. All right, and you want to share the word, you, oh, you're one of those. You're one of those, huh? Right? You got the most normal people in the world, who people you think are your friends, and you try to share share this with them, and you, I mean, it's completely good night city, you know, and um, and and these people have never read the Bible, and they never will probably read the Bible. And 
Um, and, you know, they need to hear that word so that they can get saved. You know, the word of God is living and active, all right? These words are life. That's what the Bible says. That's that's a great witness for us is the word. You know, you get the stories. You get the great history. You get what happened to Jesus and, you know, what happened to um, the Jews throughout the Old Testament who were chosen because they were the smallest of all nations in, in Deuteronomy 7, verse 7. Because man is so proud, God chose, chooses the weak to humble the strong. So you, that's that's how you got to look at the the old the Old Testament. And um, he's gonna, you know, he he came and he he he, he lived a perfect life, as I said, as predicted in the Old Testament. And he died on a cross, all right. And he paid for sin. And now his righteousness is imputed to us, to our account. That's a, a, a theological term, but that's how we stand. We we can stand. We can be called citizens of heaven right now because of the imputed righteousness of Christ. It's called the great exchange. All of our sin for. All, you know, for God's righteousness covers us. Even though we're sinners, we're standing under grace. We're saved by grace through faith. And it's a gift of God so that no one uh, can boast because we would boast. We would say, you know, but now we can just, all we can just say is thank you, God. You know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amazing grace. These words actually have meaning, you know, what God did, but only from a born again perspective born of the spirit can you understand these words i might as well be talking to um a wall so that word of god is the emphasis is is the life the word of god is life it's going out there goes into your ears right <laughs> goes through your eyes maybe or your ears into your soul and in, in, into your heart frees your will so you can choose god okay the we are dead in sin. We are dead in trespasses. Okay. I want to mention also that we're not robots. Okay. <laughs> People, you know, say that, oh, God doesn't make robots, right? But we were dead. We were worse than robots. Okay. We were dead. God's word did a work. And then the will is freed, all right? So that's an important thing to, to note. So the message is still out there every day. Today is that day of salvation and there's urgency every day because every day's people are slipping into eternity without knowing this message. And so God gets the glory here. He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. So that's my message for you today. And I'm going to take a look for you and see what happened. Um, all right, there's a scripture here in 1 Peter 3, 18 to 20. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous. See, that's that great exchange I'm talking about, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and, pro and made pro proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people ate and all were saved through water. So he he he, uh, he proclaimed to the imprisoned spirits those who were disobedient long ago. So that's in First Peter three, eighteen to twenty. That's interesting. That was that Shoal, Shoal or 
Hades, um, that's beyond my scope, I think, but, but there is, yeah. the Apostle Creed says he descended into hell. So this is where you get get into the the Greek words show. And uh, as Hades. So that may not be hell, okay? <laughs> he went to Abraham's side or the blessed side of Hades. So, did Jesus go to hell? No. Did Jesus go to show Hades? Yes. So this is a good article. Um, got questions. Dot org. You can look it up. It breaks it down for you. So he went to shows. It explains it very well. Did Jesus go to show slash Hades? Yes. Did he go to hell? No. There you go. <laughs> so there's a reference there. It's with God, GodQuestions.org. It's about four or five paragraphs if you want to read it. But it talks about the difference between Shoal and Hell, okay? Abraham's bosom and where Jesus went. I don't know if does that help. <laughs> So that's what we got. We got, um, this is where Jesus was at this point in time before he was waiting his glorified body, okay? And then he, and then he gets resurrected, uh, tomorrow would be the day. And many people see him. And based on those eyewitness testimonies, uh, um, Simon Greenleaf, as I said multiple times before, who was the Harvard Law Professor, Royal Harvard Law Professor at Harvard, said that you could, um, believe it or not, uh, prove the resurrection. Not that just Jesus lived or he was a good teacher or, he was, or if he was a God, or, you know, you could prove the resurrection in any U.S. court, right? by eyewitness testimony. I mean, that's a triple whammy right there. And that's the Harvard Law professor, the man who founded Harvard Law. And you know, the, I keep going back to Revelation 12, verse 12, that Satan is furious right now. He's He has great wrath and he's suppressing everything. And that's what's going on out there right now. He's got all his minions out there and the demons are filling people, you know, and they, and the evil that's being done out there, it's, we don't even hear half of it, I'm sure. Um, but they're suppressing this message. That's the number one thing they're doing, is suppressing the gospel. You know, you have a, a huge denomination, supposed denomination, I don't even call them a Christian church, the Catholic church, is suppressing the gospel message of free salvation just by believing, all right? Even the Pope isn't saved in their, you know, guaranteed salvation in their system. And you look at their fruit, you know, continually, you know, um, I'll, I, I don't even have to mention it and I'm not gonna mention it here. I'm not gonna, you know, <clears throat> it speaks for itself. And if you keep supporting that organization, you know, you, you first of all, you, you obviously you don't know the gospel message, and you were doing things out of fear, all right? And Jesus says, "Fear not, fear not." How many times does he say that in the Bible? I think three hundred and sixty-five times. He might, uh, someone might have counted. So that's one for every day, all right? Fear not. Fret, fret not. That's another one. Fret not. You know, don't fret. 
you know, Jesus talks about coming to him, you know, Matthew 11. Come to him, all right? You must be born again. That's the only thing you must be, and that just means believing. You must believe. That's what That's what it means. And you, by that faith, you are saved. You cross over from death to life. But, you know, if the word of God, these words don't mean anything to you, you know, and then, you know, and you, you're trying to earn God's salvation based on your own um, doing things out of fear. You know, the Bible says all the good things you do is in vain if you don't have Jesus, if you don't believe in Jesus. In vain, the man wakes up early in the morning, goes to work, you know. All your righteousness is a filthy rag. How about that one? I haven't talked about that scripture too much. How true that is. If you want to, you know, talk about what, what was required for salvation. And you're depending on your, your own goodness. It might as well be a filthy rag. Because God requires 100% perfection 100% of the time. And we all, nobody gets there. So we need the imputed righteousness of Christ. You know, accomplished, that was accomplished on the cross. God living the perfect life for you. He turns to the turns to that thief on the cross and says, today you'll be with me in paradise, right? And he could guarantee that thief's salvation, right? <clears throat> so we're guaranteed salvation by our faith. And that's, that's a key. And our filthy rags, if, if we're going around trying to be good, do good, you know, first of all, you're lying to yourself in a lot of ways. You're lying to your spouse. You're lying to your children. You know, we're all falling short. And you're creating this, you know, uh, family or structure that's based on lies. And it's unhealthy. All right? And then you end up turning to all these idols that we have. I mean, look at the idols in, in my town just at this weekend. In the last weekend, you had the Masters and the weekend before. And nobody, you know, you get the hockey, you get the Red Sox, you, you get the Bruins playoffs, the Celtics playoffs, the, the, you know, so you get all these idols competing for your attention. And nobody really thinks about Jesus. <clears throat> Yet, because of that resurrection, you can live forever. But all we have is the certainty of death and nobody will investigate the Bible and they're just like, Counting on what the Catholic Church says that'll bring him into to heaven, but the Catholic Church, their their own priests, and the Pope himself, so that covers everybody. If the Pope can't be sure of heaven, you know nobody can. You know, but what does what does that John say? You know. Uh, who wrote the book of Revelation, who wrote the Gospel of John, you know, he was Jesus' favorite disciple, right? Uh, you, you know, First John, you know, it says we can know, we can say, uh, we are saved, you know. <laughs> it's kind of a cult, actually. You know, a lot of you gotta be careful what you watch. All right, here's one. John, there's a lot of stuff online that, you, <laughs> that can be twisted. In fact, there's a great book called Twisted Scriptures. But 1 John 5, 13 says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, 
so that you may know that you ha have eternal life. So that's the whole point is so that you can know that you can have um, eternal life. John, John 3 and John 6 talk a lot about it. John 17, 3 says, this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, who, whom you have sent. John 3.16 God so loved the world that he gave his only one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life so believing in him you have eternal life you know and the Bible says we're citizens of heaven you know present possession eternal life present possession you know and, and so today is that day of salvation. There's a sense of urgency. Um, <clears throat> and we need to have an understanding of this. We need to be born again. If we're not born again, we'll never understand this. So what's preventing us from being born again? Reading the Bible. We don't want to read the Bible because we're told that it's bad news. So that's a lie who's telling us that it's bad news. It's Satan. Satan's telling us that it's bad news. He's represented by many different, you know, <clears throat> individuals, figures, institutions, organizations, governments, whatever you want to call it, media, and whenever the Bible is presented, it's marked that it's presented in a negative light, you know, Hollywood misrepresents the Bible or loves to like, you know, um, take the name of the Lord of, in vain. So that's what you're dealing with in your condition. You, you're being prepped to to have a um, adverse reaction when you hear the Bible. But the Bible's good news. It's free salvation to anybody who believes. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> living waters come to you know, come to me, all you are weary. You know. drink right fountain of the living water is Jesus Christ you know there's ten verses about living water in Jesus whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst but the water that I give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life he who believes in me that's John 4 14 so on 736, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being, the flow of rivers of living water will flow, will flow rivers of living water. So that's what you've been missing is this, you know, that's what I was missing. <laughs> and even in the Old Testament, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all those who forsake you will be put to shame. Those who turn away on earth will be written written down because they have forsaken the fountain of the living water even the Lord in that day waters will flow out of Jerusalem half of them toward the eastern sea and the other half toward the western sea it will be summer as well as in winter and the Lord will be king over all the earth and in that day the Lord will be the only one in in his name only see the Lord is coming back and he's gonna rule and reign for a thousand years when he comes back he's gonna come down on the mountain of waters and the earthquake gonna split just like he left uh,
So he would come back to that mountain, Mount of Olives. That's where he's coming back to. That's what the original temple was. And Jesus will come back to that Mount of Olives. And I think that that's where the Dome of the Rock is right now. So that'll be interesting. The Dome of the Rock with the Dome of the Rock is that's where Jesus is coming back to. So um, I was going to try to read the rest. Oh, here we go. So living waters continue. Now, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out and said, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. John 7. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of, the Spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit was yet not given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And uh, the famous one in John 4, he had to pass through Samaria and he came to the city called Sitchar. He had a parcel of the crown that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. I think this is uh, Nabu right now. And also is known as uh, Sachem. It's supposed to be the most beautiful city around. It has four surrounding mountains from what I understand. So, so, <clears throat> so Jesus, being wearied from this journey, was sitting by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Uh, I think that's 12 o'clock. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Now, that I'm telling you the story of the, the woman at the Samarian, at the, the, at the well. John 4. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. This is going to take a minute or two. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritan. Jesus answered her and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? You, you are greater than our father Jacob, are you, who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst Wow. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Now, we've, we, we referenced that early. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty nor come here all the way to draw. He said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You have correctly said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. And the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you people say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship that we, what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. 
but an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Sorry, you have to be mourning in. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, and he who is called the Christ. When that one comes, he will declare all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. John chapter 4. So, so you can see you can have this relationship you can have this you know and if anyone drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst so that's that's you know where salvation takes its root it's in in you it's in the relationship it's it's being born again see see what Jesus is saying here um a couple more I guess John I think we already read this yeah we already read this Then he's in, in uh, Revelation 21 at the end, he says, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of water of life without cost. He who overcomes will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But for the cowardly and the unbelieving and the abomin abomin abominable, and murderers, and immoral persons, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars. Their power will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelation 22, the very last chapter of the Bible. Then the angel showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street on either side of the river was the tree of life, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit for every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healings of the nation. All right. So that's a great way to understand how why it's important to be born again is looking at this metaphor of living water you know the spirit and the metaphor here and, and and drinking and never thirsting again and that's what's possible because of the resurrection because of the atonement the imputed righteousness has come you know the great exchange and we can have confidence the Bible says it talks about confidence the Catholic Church doesn't talk about confidence all right once you're born again you have confidence the Bible talks about that multiple times in Hebrews uh, and, and in other scriptures you can do a word study on the word confidence you can google that or go to get a concordance you know look up the word confidence you know, you need to have confidence in life. And, and you know, the only thing we know, as I was saying, is that we do die for sure. And the reason we don't know about eternal life and living water and having confidence is because we don't read the Bible. So there's a, there's a disconnect there. And if you don't read the Bible, and you're being trained not to read the Bible. You, you're being told that it's bad news. It's already been slandered in your mind. It's been seared in your conscience. Only God himself can, in these words, can go forth and break through the haze that you're in when you don't believe like I was for many years. But that one word, Jesus alone, can break through. But there are other words, obviously, in the word of God. And as you read it, you can read about the living water. 
you know, the only joke people have, the only thing they know about the water is you turn the water into the wine, and that's why I can go out and get drunk all the time, right? That's like a, a running joke out there. And that's all people really know about Jesus, you know. So, get to the point of faith, get the court of bleeding, get feed on the word of God, drink up the word of God, and you and drink into that spirit, and you will be saved. You live forever. You have eternal life. You have glorified bodies. You're crossing over from death to life at that point. But today is the day of salvation, and there's an urgency out there to get this message out. We all need redemption. We need to be redeemed, and we need that life insurance, that Jesus insurance that was born on the cross, and he rose from the grave, and death is now dead. Death is dead. So we know that death is real, but we can say that death is dead. Oh, death, where is your sting? The Bible says in the book of Isaiah. It's quoted again in 1 Corinthians, I believe. So that's my message today. And this is Elephants of Plenty. And I think we talked about a few elephants in the room today. And if you, you know... If you if you need um, to talk more about it, just send me a, an email or, or write me a note. Um, but get into that word, you know, and just believe, you know. But be careful because there's a lot of, you know, I just did that uh, Bible search and you know, there's a lot of tricky. <laughs> there's a lot of condemnation on the by on the on on the internet. So you got to make sure you're reading the right message. Get that message resolved first. Eternal life is a free gift. <clears throat> I'm going to sign off. Have a great one.